Welcome to the next lecture on Mendelian genetics. We have been talking about the use of Mendelian principles to analyze inheritance, especially toward prediction of the occurrence of a set of some inherited disease in an offspring, so that the parents would be able to handle it better. Let us look at a person affected with a genetic disease. Suppose a person is affected with a genetic disease. What are the chances that a child will be born with that disease? That is the question that we are going to ask now. Okay. In this lecture, this is what we are going to see the various possibilities of that happening. To do this, something called a pedigree analysis can help. Pedigree charts or family charts show the family relationships over history and phenotypes, characters, characteristics. So based on the phenotypes, the characters, the observable characters, the genotypes are worked out as completely as possible and used to make further predictions. Okay. We cannot go and do experiments with humans and therefore, we need to use all the information that is available in terms of observable characters and draw our conclusions. Of course, if it is uh, if somebody's genotype can be tested just by taking uh, some part of the saliva or some blood and so on and so forth, that can be done that is uh, uh, that is acceptable to most and that can be used to help in the analysis. However, in uh, many of these cases, it may not be even be possible because maybe the grandparents and the previous generations have passed on and uh, therefore, uh, the analysis of the phenotypes and the guess of the genotypes are used to uh, get as complete inf an information on the genotype as possible and thereby make further predictions. We will see a couple of examples of those. For that, we have a certain terminology. If you have a circle, it means a female. If you have a square, it means a male. These are standard terminologies for pedigree analysis. If you have a filled square, it means that the female has the disorder. The disorder is apparent. If it is a filled square, it is a male with the disorder. If it is a half filled circle, then something called a female carrier, it will become clearer. The person does not show the disease, but the person carries a part one allele which can cause the disease and this is true for recessively inherited traits. You know if both need to be small, uh, let us say small p, small p uh, for a disease to manifest, then if it is capital P, small p, then this becomes a carrier, right? The small p is still there that can be passed on to the next generation. Although because of the capital P, uh, this uh, disease may not manifest in this particular person in the carrier. That is what a carrier means. The disease is not manifest, but the person has a potential to pass on the allele to cause the disease in in the offspring or in the offspring's offspring. And this is a male carrier. So, circle is a female, square is a male, if it is filled then the person is showing the disorder, if it is partly filled then the person is a carrier. Okay. These two can be uh, you know filled in or these two can be decided just by observations and records whereas, this requires a genetic analysis or at least genetic possibilities which we can uh, deduce with surety. Let us take the case of a recessively inherited disorder, okay. um, which is uh, what would be natural to think. If it is both small, then the person has the disease. That is not always the case, but uh, let us let us take that for the time being. That is what would be, uh, that is what one would expect given the background that we have been through. Albinism you know the person with uh, who has uh, light colored skin patches in patches or sometimes even the entire body that is albinism okay that is a recessively inherited disorder 
Let us say that this is a family that we are considering, a female who has albinism marries a male without albinism and uh, they have children, a female without albinism, a male with albinism, a male with albinism and a male without albinism and these two marry and they produce two children, a female without albinism and a female with albinism. Okay. Then these two marry, these are two different families, their children, are, uh, the two among their children, each one, uh, a child from each family marries the other and they have children. So far the observations are, uh, one has albinism, is a female with albinism and another is a female without albinism and this is the grandparents generation, the first generation terminology. This is the parents and their siblings, okay, second generation and this is the third generation that we are currently concerned with. Uh, this is what it is and this is the pet, uh, family tree on which we are going to do pedigree analysis. If we are interested in finding the following, if another child in the third generation, in this generation is born to the same parents, what is the probability of that child being an albino? Okay. Here itself is, uh, I mean by now it is not very surprising, but you see here this person is not affected with albinism, this person is not affected with albinism, whereas the offspring of that, those parents is affected with albinism. That is because it comes from the grandparents. Okay. Now that we know Mendelian inheritance, we know how this can happen. The um, recessive uh, possibility skips, uh, it is skipped here, but it is manifested in the third generation. Let us go back to the, let us go to the analysis now. This is uh, the way the various linkages in the family are shown and the various phenotypes are shown according to our um, code, the generally accepted code. If we look at obvious genotypes, this is a male with albinism, therefore it has to be small p, small p or anything with an albinism has to be small p, small p because it is a recessively inherited disorder. So, let us start here small p, small p, small p, small p. This one should also be small p, small p that we can fill in for everything. Whereas, here the person does not have uh, it is a female who does not have albinism, okay. whereas this parent has both small p alleles and since one allele comes from each parent, definitely one of the alleles has to be p. And since this person is not showing albinism, the other allele has to be capital P. If the other allele had been small p, then uh, this person would have also been affected. Similarly, this person is from this parent therefore, must have inherited a small p and uh, this the other allele must have been a capital P from the other parent. Okay. With this and taking a look at this, this father uh, the, or the grandfather should have had at least one capital P and one small p only then these kind of possibilities would exist. right? Other, if both had been capital P, then these two people would not have uh, had albinism. The, cap, both the other allele would have been capital P and as long as one allele was uh, capital, then the disease would not have been manifested here. And since it is manifest here and also it is not manifest here, this person must have had capital P, small p. Okay, this is the analysis. Similarly, we can do an analysis here. This is small p, small p definitely, this is kept uh, and this is small p, small p because both are affected and uh, this must have been capital P because this person does not have the disease uh, and therefore, uh, it is quite easy to see why this must, uh, must have also been capital P, small p because the person does not have the disease. Now, 
this is uh, heterozygous, this is also heterozygous, it is a cross between heterozygous uh, parents and uh, what is the probability that this person whether a male or a female would have the disease. It would be one fourth uh, the probability uh, you know these are, this is a heterozygous cross therefore capital P capital P capital P small p small p capital P and small p small p are the possibilities therefore one fourth is the probabil probability that it will be small p small p to result in the child being albino. You could also ask what would be the genotype of the third generation offspring which is these two and quite easy to see it has to be either capital P small p or capital P capital P both can arise. We cannot rule that out from just this observation that the person is not uh, an albino the person could be a carrier okay. whereas here it is very clear that it has to be small p small p. Okay. So, this is uh, a lot of information that we can gather just by looking at uh, what um, the, the various relationships between people and their observed characters and we have guessed the genotypes based on or deduced the genotypes that is the best way to say it deduce the genotypes given that albinism is a recessively inherited disorder. Now, some of you might have been wondering why did I keep harping on recessively inherited ok. You could, you could think how else could the disorder be inherited. It so happens that a disorder could be a dominantly inherited disorder too and Huntington's disease which is so prevalent in the US is actually a um, dominantly inherited disorder which means if one allele is capital then the person has the disorder which also means that most of the population is homozygous recessive ok. Both are small small right only then will the population not have uh, will, will the person not have uh, the Huntington's disease. If one of them is capital then the person definitely has the disease that can also happen. At the same time the dominant allele is not the one that is found in a majority of people ok. This could also happen we will not get into how it happens and so on and so forth. If you are interested you can go and read later chapters of your textbook it does talk about that. But for now basic course let us look at what happens if you have a dominantly inherited disorder and let us do um, pedigree analysis for the very same family ok. It is the same family so this is what it was right. And these things refer to the Huntington's disorder. By the way Huntington's disease or a disorder is a neurodegenerative disease that sets in after 45 ok. So, it is uh, sometimes um, a little difficult for the people and they could actually have their um, uh, genes uh, genotype tested to see whether they are to see whether they have Huntington's disease. If they have Huntington's disease then it is a badly degenerative disease that sets in after 45 and uh, it is bad life after that. So, it is it has a lot of ramifications social and uh, cultural and so on, social essentially um, and of course, health wise uh, and the fact that you could be sitting on a ticking time bomb. So, it is one such disorder which is predominantly found in the US not much in India. Uh, here this shows the family members who have Huntington's disease by a shaded square or a circle ok. A shaded square is uh, uh, an affected male and a shaded circle is an affected female ok. Now, let us do the uh, analysis here same way that we did the analysis for a recessively inherited disorder which was albinism it was an example of that. Same question if a, another child is born to the same parents what is the probability for Huntington's in that child ok. This is more serious than albinism. Albinism is uh, merely uh, looks and maybe it, it makes the person prone to cancer and so on skin cancer, but it is not as dangerous as this ok. But it has a social angle to it. Uh, so, that could also be considered important enough. Very clearly this has to be both smalls for the person not to show the disease, both small here 
and both small here that can be very easily guessed deduced. Since this person is showing the disease and uh, this is both uh, recessive it has to be at least one dominant for the person to show the disease and therefore, it, this has to be uh, small h capital H. This is also got to be small h capital H same parents and because this is small h capital H the only way this can result is if this is capital H small h. This cannot be capital H capital H otherwise these two people would have also had the disease. Similarly, this would be small h small h no disease this one would also be small h small h no disease. This has to be capital H capital H with the disease because this has resulted in one small h coming from here therefore, at least one is a small the other one has to be capital for it to show the disease therefore, it is capital H small h and by the same argument this is capital H small h and what is uh, the probability that this person will, ha will have Huntington's you can work out the probabilities here either if uh, one of either if it is heterozygous dominant or homozygous dominant the person will show the disease. So, it is a very high three fourths or a 75 percent probability that the sib that the child another child born to the same parents will have Huntington's disease Huntington's gene which will develop into a disease at around 45 or so. And genotype of the third generation offspring is capital small h cap small h here and uh, if you work out the details here we will not be sure. It could either be this and this or this and this or this and this therefore, it either capital H small h or capital H capital H at least one has to be capital because the person is showing the disease. Okay, these kind of questions can be answered and uh, the parents can be alerted to these possibilities the people can themselves be alerted to these possibilities. Now, let us look at both of them together okay, and use probabilities here. If another child in the third generation is born to the same parents what is the probability of that child being an albino with Huntington's. Okay. Albino is one characteristic Huntington is another character character uh, they are independently inherited according to Mendelian principles and to come up with the probability we need to consider a dihybrid cause in which albino character and Huntington's character is are considered. If we do that invo invoking the law of independent assortment the probability of Huntington's is three fourth the probability of albinism is one fourth according to the various combinations here. Therefore, the probability of an albino with Huntington's okay, both are independently uh, inherited independent assortment three fourth into one fourth uh, multiplication rule 3 by 16. Okay. So, this is the probability. So, you can work out various different things with these probabilities and the law of independent assortment one can get tested for the presence of uh, disease genes and alleles um, whether you are a, ca a carrier or not. If you have the disease you know that your genotype could be a certain way. If you do not have the disease you would like to know whether you are a carrier whether you are going to pass it on to the next generation one can do that. Even fetuses can be tested through uh, procedures called amniocentesis or chorionic villus sampling called CVS these two are done especially for disease kind of a situation and so on. Okay. Whatever we have seen so far is valid for a certain kind of inheritance. It is for the inheritance of alleles that reside on the 22 pairs of human chromosome the 23rd pair x y if you recall determines the sex of the child okay, whether it is a male or a female. And uh, the 23 pairs are found in each cell in each body that, that you already know. Uh, whatever we have seen so far is valid if the allele sits on the first 22 chromosomes not the 23rd. If it is if it sits on the 6 chromosomes then things are going to be different and let us see how the things become different if the allele sits on the sex chromosome. The first 22 pairs are actually called autosomes 
or somatic chromosomes, somatic for body, somatic chromosomes. And the 23rd pair is called the sex chromosomes because it determines sex of the person. Now, gender, I think in this lecture we would use interchangeably with sex, but in actual terms gender has a social connotation and sex has a biological connotation. Um, but we, we could use this or I could use this interchangeably in this lecture. The female has an XX uh, sex chromosome uh, occurrence and the male has a XY sex chromosome occurrence. In addition to sex determining genes, there are many other genes that are present on X and Y. Uh, the inheritance of characters determined by the genes present on X and Y is what uh, is called sex linked inheritance. If it is sex linked inheritance, the probabilities would be different from what we have seen if they had been uh, autosomal inheritance. An example of sex linked inheritance is hemophilia. Haemophilia is an inability to uh, inability of the blood to clot and if that happens then the person has a wound then the person continues to bleed. Uh, if it is outside there is a way of handling it, but if it happens inside then it can be dangerous inside the body. The person can bleed to death for no fault and uh, that condition is actually called haemophilia. You can take a look at this uh, YouTube video. If it is a female it is XX and let us say that the person has A and A, uh, phenot A, and A genotype there we are using a superscript to determine the genotype that is associated with the X chromosome. Since it is a male it has to be X and, X and Y, since the male is affected it is a capital, it is a small a. The gametes from a cross between these two uh, would result in X a Y, X small a Y and capital A capital A, the gametes are X A X A from the eggs and the sperm gametes are X A Y and a Punnett square from this kind of a cross would result in capital A small a, capital A, capital A small a and capital A. And as you can see the if there is a Y the offspring is going to be a male, both these are males and both these have the capital A on their X chromosome, so therefore they are unaffected. The female offspring, these two, they are again unaffected because they have at least one capital A, but they are carriers, they have the other small a, right. Therefore, female offspring is a carrier, is not affected but can pass on to the pass on the uh, defect to the next offspring. This we have already seen. Okay, this is the way it happens the probabilities would be different if you calculate it is determined it is dependent on the sex of the person sex of the offspring. Now, let us say it is a cross between a carrier and an affected male carrier female and an affected male. If we work out the Punnett square it is going to be something like this. The uh, one female and one male are going to be affected. Okay. Therefore, 50 percent of the offspring are affected and this shaded ones are the affected ones, 50 percent of the offspring are affected. The male offspring this and this are males, male offspring again, again 50 percent affected and female offspring 50 percent affected and 50 percent are carriers. Another example between a carrier female and an unaffected male. In this case only 25 percent of the offspring are affected, it happens to be a male because uh, the small a comes here, the y does not have anything. The may, if you consider the male offspring alone 50 percent are affected, if you consider the female offspring alone no female offspring is affected, but 50 percent are carriers which are these. Okay. So, if the allele res, uh, lies on the X chromosome, then the probabilities are going to be different from that 
we found with autosomal disorders or the alleles that reside on autosomal chromosomes. Thus, X-linked inheritance is different from inheritance by Mendelian principles. Pedigree analysis with Mendelian principles that we saw earlier can be extended in some situations such as X-linked disorders okay, to a certain extent. This is um, one such possibility that I have shown here. What I would say is why do not you work this out? We have already been at it for about uh, 30 minutes or so long lecture. Why do not you work this out with whatever we have learnt in this particular class? And when we begin the next class, I will begin by solving this. Okay. There are these question marks here. This is what we need to find uh, whether these are affected or not that is a question. Uh, these are various numbers that are given for our reference. Uh, the other representations are the normal representations. And these three are affected. You would like to find out what kind of a disorder it is it. Uh, yeah. These are the questions. Is it is the inherited character dominant or recessive, autosomal or X-linked? That is the first question. If uh, 3 is not a carrier, if this is given, what are the genotypes of 1 and 4? That is what you are asked to find. The probability that 14 is affected is what you are asked to find. Okay. Why do not you work this out? And then when we meet, you can check the solution with the solution that I will provide in the next lecture. See you then.